low profile, hot swappable mechanical keyboard that has an onboard display and tri mode connectivity, all for 159 bucks. This is a really sweet board, so let's check it out. So today we're gonna to be taking a look at the brand new Hexgears Immersion A3 TKL. It's a feature pack keyboard that in my opinion is priced super competitively when taking into account all that this board offers. But before we get into it, I do wanna mention that this video is sponsored by Hexgears. So massive thank you to them for sending over these boards for me to check out and share with you guys. They sent over not just one, but three keyboards for us to check out. Each one of these has a different switches in it that Hexgears offers. So. We're gonna go over all three of those different versions a little bit later on in the video. But look, I'm just one guy. I can't use three keyboards at once. So with that being said, I'd love to give back to you guys just as a way of saying thank you for watching my content. So sit tight and we'll be giving away these two a little bit later on in the video because uh, yeah, I wanna keep one for myself. It's a really cool board. But before we get into that, let's unbox one of these boards fresh just so you can see what you get in the box. So when you open a box, you're immediately greeted by the board. And we're not gonna spend too much time here, but spoiler alert, these are the clicky switches. So let's just put this over here for now. Then we have a QC note as well as a manual. Under this flap, we have a keycap and switch puller. And then over here, we have a USB-C to USB-A cable. And that's it, a really quick, no frills attached unboxing. So now let's talk about the actual construction of the board itself. It's relatively lightweight with a plastic lower cover and an aluminum upper cover, and it's super thin. But with that being said, Hexiers was able to still stuff a sponge layer inside to help out with that sound signature. The keycaps are made of polycarbonate, so they're smooth like ABS, but they're anti-fade. So you shouldn't have to worry about the black finish actually coming off. And of course, it's a TKL keyboard, so you're gonna save some desktop space there by not having that numpad. On the bottom, we have five rubber stoppers and two flip out feet that have two different heights. Personally, I found that having both feet all the way out just overall gave the most comfortable typing experience. So one of the biggest selling points of this keyboard is that it's low profile. And I won't lie, this is the first low profile keyboard I've ever really used, aside from like a laptop keyboard, if you wanna consider that. But I feel like that's kind of the best way to describe the typing experience, like mechanical switch type aside, which we'll talk about that in a second. These switches are just overall simply shorter than your traditional mechanical switch. So because of that, you don't have to raise your wrist as much to type. And as a result, it's a more ergonomic experience than your traditional mechanical keyboard. So just as an example, let's take a look at this thick mechanical keyboard, right? I need a wrist rest in order for this to be comfortable to type on. Otherwise it's a no-go. So that's one of the beauties about the Immersion A3 and the fact that it's low profile is that you can just have the keyboard right on your desk. You don't need a wrist rest and it's gonna be ergonomic. Wrist right on my desk, I know. Crazy. Another benefit of this form factor is that the board is just overall super thin. That makes it really easy to take with you on the go. And if you do choose to bring it with you, you can either choose to bring the 2.4 gigahertz wireless dongle. It just kind of stashes right up here in this little hole, or you can connect it to your laptop via USB-C or even Bluetooth. So the A3 allows you to connect up to three Bluetooth devices at once. And it's really simple to switch between the three thanks to these dedicated Bluetooth buttons up here, which I find super convenient. You don't have to worry about like memorizing FN key combinations or anything like that. Connecting to a Bluetooth device is as straightforward as you can get. You just hold the Bluetooth button down for five seconds for it to enter pairing mode, and then you can add it to whatever device you want. This board is compatible with Windows, Mac, Android, iPad OS, and iOS. And if you wanna to switch to Mac OS mode, all you have to do is hold down on the FN key and then the tab key for five seconds and you'll be in Mac mode. Then this button up here allows you to switch between wired and wireless mode. Speaking of wireless mode, inside of this board is a 5,800 milliamp hour battery that Hexgears rates will deliver up to 50 hours of gameplay with a single charge even with RGB lighting on. If you do wanna conserve some battery though, there's a dedicated button right here to turn off the display and a function key to disable RGB lighting. I really like that Hexgears made the FN hotkeys super clear and easy to understand because I don't know about you, but I always seem to forget what certain hotkeys are on my other boards. So I just really appreciate it. It's, it's the little touches, you know? All right, so now let's talk about one of the other really awesome features of this board, the little display over here. So it's a TFT display that can be controlled by this dial right here and these four buttons. This dial will allow you to scroll between the the different pages of configurations, and then these buttons are dedicated to perform certain actions. So this button will bring us back to the home screen. This button acts as a confirmation button so you can get into the specific sub pages. And then this button is a return button. So you can basically go back a page. Now, in terms of what you can control with the actual display itself, it's really all geared towards the RGB effects. So if we go right here into the effect menu, right now we're on effect 10. So we can be like, all right, let's change it to effect 17 because we want like an RGB 
type of uh, color shift effect, or maybe effect 19, which is this like RGB spectrum effect. And then from there, we can hit the back button, maybe change up the color. Right now it's on RGB, but let's make it purple. That looks pretty cool. And then, you know, we can do things like adjust the brightness. Right now we're at 100%, so kind of like that there. But if you want to, you can turn it down to, you know, 20% up to 10. So it goes in the intervals of 20. Or we can adjust the speed so we can change the speed of the effect, either make it faster or slower. And uh, yeah, you get where I'm going with this. Personally, I love this because sometimes you just don't feel like messing around with the RGB software in your computer. So having all the control right here at your fingertips is just super useful. And then of course on the home screen, we can see things like date and time and how much battery life we have left and what mode it's currently in. So if we switch to the Bluetooth mode, you'll see the Bluetooth icon light up. It's nice, it's convenient, and I think on this board itself, it just looks really cool. You can also customize the display and put whatever GIF or image you want on there. That's all done in the hex gear software. So let's really quickly cover the software itself. So inside of here, this is where you can modify things like your FN layer. You can also create different profiles or configure macros. You can also edit your RGB lighting and choose from all these different effects that we have here. But the thing that you most likely wanna modify if you download this software is the little GIF or image that displays up here on your little display, right? Now, in order to do that, you have to make sure that the keyboard is first connected and set to wired mode. And then when you do that, you'll see a little icon up here over here on the left-hand side. If we click that, it's gonna bring us to the editor and you'll see that there's already gonna be a pre-made GIF in here from Hexgears. If you go down here to the bottom right and click new, it's gonna bring up this little plus sign. You can click that and add in whatever image you want. It has to be a JPEG or a PNG. So let's go ahead and add in this PNG of Deadpool. Right now we're in editing mode, so we can go ahead and kind of go in and like take the brush tool and draw around and I don't know, go like that. We can type in some text. Wow, Deadpool, um, you know, drag the text around and then you can go ahead and add another frame. So you can go ahead and do this and go frame by frame if you really want. But <laughs> I don't know about you, but I personally don't have that much free time. So the good thing is you can just upload an already pre-existing GIF. The one thing you wanna make sure is that the GIF that you upload to the keyboard is the correct dimensions. So it's 240 by 135. I found that out by exporting the GIF that came preloaded on the board itself. So just for the sake of example, let's bring this into an online editor. I like to use Easy GIF personally. So we're just gonna go in, upload him here, and really simply just enter those dimensions. So it's 240 by 135. Hit resize image. So we can go ahead and save it. And now in the hex gear software, down here, instead of hitting new, you're gonna wanna hit import and then navigate to the GIF that you wanna upload. And you'll see it right there. Just uploaded it right to the editor. So right here, you can click upload to keyboard and it's gonna send that right over to the display itself. Depending on how big the GIF is determines how long it's gonna to take to upload to the board. So like just as an example, the nine cat GIF that I had on here before took like 30 seconds for it to upload and that was eight frames. So you can kind of use that as like a little benchmark. So the cool thing about this is that the GIF actually saves to the board itself. So right now I have the board in wireless mode and you can still see it right there perfectly. <laughs> That's awesome. So we've talked about the cool features that this board offers, but let's dive a little bit into the switches here. Each board comes with KL low profile switches. They've all been engineered to have a low reset point, which is gonna come in handy when it comes to rapid presses, which is important for gaming. Now you get a choice between silence, which are linears, hide mountains, which are clickies, and black clouds, which are considered tactile. The board I've been using for the past week or so are the silent linears. I've just always found myself to be more of a fan of linear switches myself, so I naturally just gravitated towards them. The silent linear switches definitely live up to their name. They're quiet, but they also feel really nice. I would say if you're a streamer, you're gonna wanna go for these switches just so your mic doesn't pick up the clickies and clackies in the background. Or if you work in an office environment or have a bunch of people around you, you're gonna wanna go for these switches. But it all definitely comes down to your use case and the environment that you're in. So with that being said, let's jump into the sound test so you can determine which switch you like the most.
So based off those sounds, hopefully you're able to figure out which switch appeals to you the most. But let's say you decide a few months down the road that you just don't like the switch you initially went with, or you just want to try something new. It's really not the end of the world because this board is hot swappable, so you can easily swap them out for a different low profile switch. If you made it this far into the video, I just want to say thank you. I'll be giving away the Black Cloud and Hide Mountain boards to two random people, along with some Drixie stickers and a magnet. So just drop a comment down below about what feature you like the most about the Hex Gears Immersion A3, hit the like button and make sure you're subscribed. I'll be pulling the names in like 30 days from when this video goes live and I'll announce that winner in my community tab. I'll be making sure whoever wins is actually subscribed. Also, this giveaway is limited to US residents only. Anyways, good luck. Now, this is a gaming focused keyboard. So the big question is how does it actually perform in game? Well, I'm not gonna lie. I really do enjoy using these switches. They're super light and they are really responsive. And I wasn't sure if I was gonna like using these switches because I've been using Hall Effect switches for the past like six or so months. But I gotta say, I can definitely feel the shorter keystroke of the low profile switches. Wired mode works great as you'd expect, but let's switch over to wireless mode right now, just so you can see that. And when using the 2.4 gigahertz wireless dongle, I don't notice any lag whatsoever. So now I can have a nice clean desktop while gaming. Overall, I'm genuinely impressed by the Immersion A3. I think that what Hex Gears did here is great, and I'm not just saying that because this is a sponsored video. It officially goes on sale on August 26th, and if you're looking to pick one up, you can actually use my code DRIGZYHEX at checkout to receive 15% off for a limited time on the Hex Gears website. I'm gonna have that link down below along with my Amazon affiliate link if you decide to go that route instead. Huge thank you again to Hex Gears for sponsoring this video, and I'll see you guys on the next one.